and welcome to OG's Danger Show. You know how sometimes on a YouTube channel somebody will tell you, well, I'm getting, getting a lot of questions in the comment section about what I use for everyday carry. We all know they're full of ass. They're not getting a lot of questions from anybody. They're just using that as an excuse to show you what they got. I understand that. Um, however, here's a little difference. Quite a few people have recently asked me to just make a list, not a video, but they've asked me to make a list of the things that I outfit my daughter's um, emergency bags in their car with so that, uh, you know, maybe they'll have kids going off to college or a kid who already lives away and they want to keep their uh, car outfitted for personal safety for breakdowns on the side of the road. I'm in a line of work where I see a lot of uh, people broke down on the side of the road and they come out there completely unequipped to deal with a highway breakdown. They've got no money on them. They've got a dead cell phone and no charger. They've got no friends they can call. They've got uh, a no spare tire and no way of getting any help. And it boggles the mind. I've seen people leave for long trips, 10 hour trips, half a tank of gas and no way of buying gas. They don't even think about it before they leave. I don't know, folks, I don't know. So uh, what we're gonna do instead though is show you a little pack I put together for both of my daughters so that if they were to break down along the side of the highway, this is not a get home bag. This is not designed for them to hit the road, grab a rifle and go just knocking off through the trees to uh, get home in a post-apocalyptic uh, situation here. This is merely a comfort bag. Same with the crate full of uh, items over there. It's, it's items to make your stay a little more comfortable and help you actually get your vehicle up and running again so that you can get to emergency services, change a tire, put more gas in your car. And then uh, of course the bag, if you needed to, unlike the heavy crate over there, the bag can be thrown on your back if you have to hit the road and hoof it for a couple of miles to you know, get to a gas station or get to a police station, hospital, or somewhere where you can get better services. So let's take a look at what's inside the bag. First and foremost, I've got this bag wrapped tight with bungees. That helps keep everything compressed and nice and tight. You wouldn't use those if you're throwing this on your back. Bungee cords can come in helpful in a number of ways. Tie down your hood if it comes broken loose. Uh, cinch down a, a bumper that's come loose on your car, a fender. Uh, you can hook it to a tarp and make yourself a cool little lean-to And should you be in the rain. So uh, having a couple of bungees in your vehicle never hurts. Dirt cheap down at the auto parts store, get some. Um, next on the outside of this bag, you're gonna see a couple of little flares. We got a 15 minute Orion flare and a 30 minute Orion flare. Um, these are also very easy to pick up. They are legal for everyone to own um, on these little doodads. You take the cap off and it's just like striking a match. This little reddish section right here, you're gonna strike it against the head of this and you're gonna instantly get a spark and a nice hot pink flame here. Great for starting emergency fires. If you had to on the side of the road, they'll burn stuff that's even wet. These will run in the rain. Uh, they make a ton of smoke in the daytime, so you can signal for help if you're uh, lost somewhere and you just need to get a hold of help. They do drop a lot of hot phosphorus, so you're not gonna hold these things in your hand. You're gonna mount this cap back here on the end, and that little tab right there is designed that when, it's hitting the, when it lays on the road, it's not gonna roll down the highway. So you put this out there on the highway and it'll run in a, it'll burn right through the middle of a rain puddle even. And I imagine you could repel bears and chupacabras and werewolves with it too. 15 minute version right here. These are the ones that are for sale at uh, your local Walmart or pretty much anywhere milk is sold. Over here on the side of the bag, on the outside, we're gonna have just an empty water can, little, little drinking bottle. Also on the side of the bag, we keep a little uh, window punch you can get these at pretty much any auto parts store as well. Uh, this window punch works as such. You take the point of it and you press it up against a window and you're gonna hear it click. And as soon as it clicks, it's actually gonna drive this little point through the corner of the window. Usually we'll shatter a window. 20 years I've been doing this, I've never seen anybody trapped in their vehicle where they needed to smash a window to get out. Unlike uh, the movies, people don't usually end up in the bottom of a lake inside of their vehicle and need to cut their seat belt and swim out. So who knows? If only life were as cool as movies. On the side pouch over here, we've got a very nice but inexpensive fixed blade knife. 
Nice heavy Schrade knife. All right, let's get inside this pack. Okay, so we're gonna start on the outside of this pack from the, uh, from the outside gear. I usually try to layer this to where the things they would need the most or the most important or small items are, are towards the outside here. So we're gonna pop this open. You're gonna find a nice little cheap, inexpensive Ozark Trails multi-tool. Again, this is not for daily use. So I'm okay with a cheap made in China multi-tool. So this is not the tool you wanna to keep with you every single day, but having a little multi-tool with you can make things a lot easier if you're just going in there to try and clamp off a hose or uh, reach down there and, and uh, tighten a bolt on something to keep a rattle from happening. It's got a little knife blade on it, a bunch of little basic, basic tools. Um, kind of like those things from Harbor Freight. It's gonna work once very well, and after that, there's no guarantees. So, but it's nice, it's cheap. Again, most of the stuff will probably never be used, so uh, putting a ton of money into a $150 multi-tool that's only gonna sit inside of a bag, that's gotta be something that you guys uh, decide on your own. Having a lighter that always works is always important because you've always got fire there. Enough said on that. Let's see, also inside this pocket, another little flashlight, bug spray or bug, uh, bug juice, still good. Also in here, I've tucked in uh, each girl's emergency backpack. There's some emergency walking around money. So this could be tucked down deep in their pockets and be used to help buy gasoline, a gas can, a ride, enough to rent an uh, Uber, call an Uber car, whatever else. So having a little spare money in there, I know it's hard to do for some of us to pull money aside and then just put it in a bag and keep it somewhere, but never hurts to have a few hundred dollars tucked away in a, in a get home bag or in a, um, in a roadside emergency bag. Again, the amount of people out there that break down on the side of the highway and don't have some kind of emergency funds is crazy. And if there's ever a situation where power goes out, credit card machines don't work, and I know we're all credit card uh, driven society these days, at least you've got some cash on you. On the outside of this bag, also a little magnetic uh, signal light. If I turn it on, you got a little green light there. If I click it again, doo -doo -doo. if I click it again, I'm getting a little, little green flash. That's just kind of a good little signal if you're walking on the side of the road after dark so that people can see you. That just magnetizes right on there. Again, pick this up from Walmart in the jogging in the workout section for probably about six or seven bucks. Okay, inside this pouch on the outside, you've got your standard Barnum Animal Crackers. Come on, kids, we were all raised on these things. These are awesome. In fact, I might get into some right now. Teddy Grahams. It's kind of important, too. I've got kids that grew up on Teddy Grahams, and, uh, you know, if things go bad, it's, it's good to have a little taste of home right there with you. Also, obviously, this is for energy, emergency food, Nutri-Grain bars. I've got a little waterproof match container. Inside they give you a some striking plates and a little piece of tinder cotton. Also there's your storm matches that are pretty good for windy and, and wet conditions. And then of course a striker on the outside. This is where you put those little striker plates. But when this is all packaged up and closed, it's actually waterproof. I've taken these with me on backpacking trips. It's good to have fire in the car no matter what. Carmex, little lip balm, I think you pretty much know. Not only is it good for your lips if they dry out, which can be a miserable, miserable time if you're out walking across the desert, but you can put this on uh, sore knees and sore, uh, you know, hot spots on your feet if they're rubbing against a shoe. There's a lot of things you can do. I recently used some Carmex that was in my pocket to seal a hose that needed to fit tight on a, underneath a pipe, pipe uh, clamp. So it's, it's good for more than just your dried out lips. Got to have some light sticks. There's a green and a yellow. Again, break these things open. They give you a little working light out there in the middle of the dark uh, until you can find your flashlight or until you can get your, your uh, little light box set up there behind, behind your car at least, or take them to a rave. Who am I to tell you what to do with your light sticks? Also, uh, this is one of two. I see the other one back there. This is a little quick clot style. Um, hemostatic agent, little, the, the sand stuff. You pour this in, the, uh, in, your, in a little wound and it'll help stop your bleeding. Again, we're not talking about a gunfight here. You're not coming home from Fallujah, pouring this in your gut wound and uh, stopping the bleeding and it returns your bowels. 
but it uh, just helps you if you get a cut or something that you can stop that from trickling. It's got the uh, Mike Lindell from the My Pillow guy is on the cover, so you know it's good if the pillow guy will endorse it. All right, I think that's it for this pouch. Let's work our way back. We've got some standard old zip ties, good for clamping down a hose or hooking on a plastic bumper again. Zip ties are always good. Whatever you call it, hand sanitizer in there. If you got to use the restroom on the side of the road or eat some food or something like that, you've been working on your car, this stuff is uh, pretty handy to wash off your hands. If you got to shake hands with a nasty dude or like now in the middle of this whole coronavirus scare, it's good to have some of this stuff sitting around at all times. Believe it or not, this stuff will actually help you light a fire too. We'll get to that in a different video. In this pack, inside of a holster, I'm going to show you if you are in a jurisdiction where you can carry such a thing, have a way to travel with your firearm. We'll talk about this in a different video, but your firearm should always be mounted on you, not really stuck to your vehicle. Um, this pack happens to have a way to mount this firearm in it. It comes also with several spare magazines. Oh look, more stormy matches. Uh, we've got several magazines in here. I think there's, yeah, four spare magazines, a little uh, Smith & Wesson Shield 9mm with four magazines, all stoked up with, uh, looks like Federal HST. So um, again, if you're, if you're able to, if you've got a concealed carry permit or you live in a place that allows you to constitutionally carry, throw that thing in there. Again, if you're trapped inside your vehicle at night and you're waiting for somebody to come by and help you, you're waiting for the police or a tow truck and some creeper comes by in a uh, van painted with a airbrushed wizard you've got your gun with you you can at least keep him away from you should he decide to break in and uh, come inside your vehicle so if it's legal folks if it's not legal i am not the one to recommend not doing that um, the two og daughters may or may not have a uh, a shield with them in their remote locations little piece of heavy duty 550 paracord again tying down tarps tying down a million things very handy to have paracord, a couple of shop rags. These smell like diesel because they're recycled shop rags. Always good for cleaning your hands. You use a little hand sanitizer, get your hands all gooey. You can clean them off with your rags there. All right, that's it for middle pouch. Let's move on to the big dog. Inside the main pouch. Now this is stuff, remember, that's going with you on the road. This is not stuff that's for your car. Yes, it's in your car if you keep this in that crate in the trunk, but should you need to hit the road, there's a reason why these, these items are transportable and can go on your back and go with you. These heavy items over here stay in your car. You don't really need them on the road. You don't need a fire extinguisher on the side of the road. You got to have your toilet paper, folks. In here, I've also got the kids some emergency food rations. These are those friggin' Navy bars or whatever. They taste like lemon. They're actually not horrible. Um, I think each one of them is, uh, let's see, there's six of them here. So each one of them is 400 calories. So you chomp on one of these things in a snowstorm while you're locked in your vehicle, staying warm with your blanket and waiting for a tow truck to come around. They've got a little expiration date on it and a manufacture date. They're good for five years. Um, I imagine they're good for way longer than that. Little first aid kit. This is a very basic first aid kit. This is in no way designed for patching up a gunshot wound, but it's got all your little boo-boo stuff in it alcohol wipes, tape, band-aids. Come on, I mean, and you know what's in there, right? Basic, basic first aid kit. You need a funnel. I usually throw the funnel in with the backpack. Uh, also in my daughter's car, I forgot to bring it over here from my truck, but in my daughter's car, there's an empty gas can, a clean empty gas can, doesn't smell like gas, uh, but we keep the empty gas can in there. If you've ever got to hit the road, You've got a funnel with you. That stays in the backpack, not in the car pack. Uh, you can hit the road with that backpack and that empty gas can and go get yourself some gas. Oh, look, Pringles. I wonder how, how long those are good for. Again, never hurts to have a little snack in there. Little water bottle. This one is for to go. Those are to stay in the trunk. This one goes with you in case you need a little sip of water on the way. Okay, one of the most important things you're gonna find in this pack. I got a couple of daughters. What's the likelihood they're going to be wearing fancy shoes, high heels, some kind of goofy flats or flip-flops or whatever they uh, were driving with if they need to hit the road? And even these aren't really the best. These are Converse, but 
put in some good old tennis shoes, some old beat up tennis shoes that you want to throw out because they're ugly and covered in mud, throw them in that emergency pack. Your good walking shoes, if you've got to trek a couple of miles, you don't want to be out there in high heels on a nice dress. You can throw on some comfortable shoes, baby wipes. They say flushable. Folks, don't flush these. Flushable wipes just for cleaning your hands or other parts of your body because your folks are nasty. There's a little rain poncho in here. This will keep you dry if you're out wandering around. This is a little bit nicer, but still only a couple of dollars from the Walmart. I don't even want to pull this thing out because you know it'll never go back in there the same way. Having a good rain poncho. It can work for a lot of things. Put it on the ground and kneel on it to keep your, uh, keep your knees from getting all dirty while you're changing a tire, but throw it over yourself, cover all your backpack and your gear, and should you have a firearm, and then hoof it to the nearest gas station. So that's an important piece of kit to have. And then all, always a big tarp. These are dirt cheap, Walmart, three or four bucks. Good to have a big uh, six by six, 12 by 12 tarp. This stuff is heavy, this is bulky, this is not going with you. This stuff is designed to help get you back on the road. First and foremost, I've got this slime stuff here. This stuff can get blasted into your tires and help repair a flat. It comes with a little compressor in here. You plug it into your cigarette lighter and you've got a little bit of air that you can blow up a, a marginally flat tire. It's not going to work on a big giant blowout. Your side walls are torn out or something like your car, but if you just get a little nail in your car and you got a slow leak, this will help get you to the nearest uh, service station where you can get back on the road. Let's throw this out of the way for a minute. Also in this pack, because every once in a while in California we have cold weather, I threw in a little fleece blanket here from Ikea. We also have what in my line of work we call this a fatal blanket. This is what we normally cover dead bodies with. However, uh, it's a plasticky kind of, uh, sort of plasticky, sort of clothy. Almost feels like those Tyvek uniforms. Um, this thing will essentially give you some waterproofing uh, there at the car. Also, fold it out on the ground, make a great place to kneel down and put on snow chains or work on something underneath your car and not get completely filthy. So these things are absolutely cool. They're very cheap and they're very disposable. So dispose of them. We got a shovel because the BS is going to get deep out there. A uh, little, little shovel here that uh, hasn't been used yet, but standard old military shovel. This is an item that should be kept in the door pocket next to your, next to the driver. It's got a little hammer on here to smash a window from the inside if you need to. And of course a seatbelt cutter. Hook it on your seatbelt, drag down, and it's going to slice your seatbelt right off of you if for some reason you're tangled up in there or you're upside down or, I don't know, underwater or something like that. Um, I've been doing my line of work with a lot of vehicle emergencies for 20 years. I've never seen anybody stuck in their seatbelt where they needed something to cut them out, but it's there if you need it. Here's another version. I prefer this version of the air compressor. Um, this one, well, one of these little hatches over here has the standard plug for your cigarette lighter. Once it's plugged in, you've got standard air compressor over here. Plug it in, turn it on. You're going to get the little uh, compressor noise. There's the on button right there. You're going to get the little compressor noise. You'll be able to jack up your tires real quick. You've also got a little on and off switch right here for this lovely little LED light. This thing's got some uh, mounting feet on it. You can set this on the highway next to you. Give yourself some good work light while you're working on your car. You don't have to put a flashlight in your teeth or you know rely on the the lights of passing cars uh, to light up your workspace you can actually put this on the ground also turn it around towards traffic and it makes a great uh, oncoming traffic warning that you're sitting there on the side of the road and make sure people don't swing off and hit you sitting there in the dark so um, you got to have a fire extinguisher I've come across a lot of people in 20 years that have needed a fire extinguisher to put out a little tiny fire in their car uh, they didn't have anything and it ended up engulfing their entire car car's gone burned up car, believe it or not, has a lot of flammable uh, materials in it. Um, surprisingly, a car, when it catches on fire, does not blow up, does not explode in a big giant uh, explosion like you see in the movies. It merely goes whoosh and burns to the ground. So don't worry about your car on fire. The loudest noise you're going to get out of there is the popping of the tires when they melt. The gas tank is not going to blow up and uh, take out five cartel members. So we've got multiple water bottles in here. We've got a this is a pre-packaged emergency roadside case from the old Walmart. I'll break it open for you. This thing's never been opened. It's got your basics in it. This is kind of like the college girl going off to school the first time. 
You've got some gloves to work with in here. You've got some hand cleaners. You've got a tow rope that probably wouldn't tow a kid's bicycle, but let's put a tow strap in there to make you feel better. You've got a flashlight and batteries in here. Throw those in your flashlight. It gives you another little handheld light. And then of course, standard jumper cables to get you out of a, you know, if you're broke down in a parking lot somewhere and you feel safe enough to go and ask someone to come over and help you jumpstart your car, you can do that. Um, so this is a standard kit. This would be kind of a very basic. If you got to have one thing and you only want to spend 20 or 30 bucks to um, outfit your teenager's new car, absolutely put something like this in their car first, okay? However, this little doodad here is one of the coolest pieces of kit we have. It's going to run you roughly $100 down at the Walmart, but this cool little deal, plug it into a standard old USB cord and you charge this at home. This thing carries enough power, it's a battery pack, it carries enough power to jumpstart your car, they say, approximately 10 times. Uh, my daughter uh, up in the north has used this. She's 10 hours away from home. Uh, she's used this to jumpstart her car already twice when she's come out to the parking garage and found her car dead. She's actually used this thing and it's worked great for her. You'll see here it's got a 35% charge because this has been sitting in a room in our house recently. Um, but when fully charged, it shows 100%. You, you uh, jumpstart your car with it and it'll take it down to about 95, 96%. So it's good for quite a few jump starts on your car. The girl is very diligent about taking this back inside, as you should be, plug it in and juice it right back up to the top again. Always keep this full. It's the same as keeping your cell phone loaded and keeping your emergency supplies going. Um, this thing, as you can tell here, USB port will also allow you to plug in your standard old iPhone or Samsung charger and charge your cell phone. So you can use this to emergency boost your cell phone if something goes wrong there too. If you're away from your car, throw this in with you and you can charge your phone from out there. And then it's got a little light on it. Everything comes with a little light on it these days. Um, let me show you this little port here. This little port is going to be the, um, the spot where you plug in your jumper cables. It's pretty easy. Put this on something metal or on the negative post. Put this on the positive post. And then you're going to hit the little power button there and go back inside your car and turn it on and the thing will start. It's kind of crazy how this little thing saves you. It, uh, it keeps you, especially like in my position, I have a couple of daughters, not crazy about them approaching a stranger in the middle of the night at a truck stop or in a, in a parking lot and asking uh, a stranger for a jump start. You're kind of admitting that you're disabled and you need somebody else's help and you're letting them too close to your personal space. So something like this is great if you want to stick by yourself and take care of your own problems, which of course is kind of the theme of this show. Have you guys ever bought something or signed up for something that seemed like a good idea at first and later when you looked into it, it turned out not to be such a good idea? Well, I have too. I've wasted countless hours, tons of money, enough to finance a, a Taylor Swift concert. That's why I'm going to bring you this segment of the OG's Danger Show called Hot Tubbing with Madonna. <laughs> On this episode of Hot Tubbing with Madonna, I wanted to bring you these little roadside flares that operate with batteries. Not a good idea, folks. The whole design behind these is uh, for use in emergencies. Guess what's not gonna be working during an emergency? Batteries. They take AA batteries, takes a screwdriver to put them in. Also not a good idea. They're cool little uh, LEDs. However, anything that takes batteries is definitely not gonna work when you need it most. Battery-operated flares on this episode of Hot Tubbing with Madonna. Hey, a little OG after action here. Folks, I want you guys to stay safe out there. This is a video about road safety, but uh, we need to be safe in everything we do. The key principle in being safe in every single thing you do is keeping your eyes up, paying attention to what's going on around you. You can avoid trouble better than ever. You don't need to be armed necessarily. You might live in a part of the world or a, in a state where you can't be armed right now. And uh, one of the best ways to protect yourself and your family out there is just to stay aware, avoid trouble before it gets to you. Um, there's no reason that you need to walk into something because you had your head in your phone and you were watching cool YouTube videos um, and somebody hit you over the head with a crowbar and took your toilet paper. So I will see you on the next video. I thank you for tuning in to OG's Danger Show. Stay tuned for the next one. <laughs>